goodness, I fell into a burning ring of fire. <laughs> me, 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 me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Folks, welcome to the channel, Three Basket Living. If this is your first time here, my name is Tom. If you've come back, nice to see you again. So today, um, this late afternoon, uh, the lighting technician has left. I'm going to cover my solar dehydrator build. And, uh, and I'm going to put some effort into this, this one here because I think it's relevant for those folks out there that are possibly in the position that I was last year. You're looking for data, you're looking for information, looking for some feedback, design ideas, all these kinds of things. Um, I, I really want to help those folks primarily more than anything. And I completely understand where they might be at right now. So we're going to do that from one end to the other. I'm going to cover it. Since this is a new channel, I don't have any footage, video footage of, of actually going through it. But I think I might have some pictures that I can include as we go along in this to help uh, show some things uh, in a little bit uh, better manner, especially when it comes to the collector. Um, I'm going to try to do that. But I'm going to leave links to items below that might be able to assist you and help you in figuring out and understanding exactly uh, some of the materials that I may have used. If they're not exact, they are extremely very close to what I utilized. Some things are just going to be common sense and you, and you won't see no links for those things. This is an important part. I have decided to do this in uh, two videos. And the reason I did that is because I don't want to leave you hanging. You'll find all kinds of builds out there, but you might be finding out that after they chose their design and, and made their food dehydrator, solar dehydrator, and, and they're not coming back and giving uh, feedback or reviews of their own build to let us know if they were successful or if they considered it a failure, things uh, like uh, what they would do different if they had it to do over again. You don't see a whole lot of that. That's what I found when I was uh, looking last year, and I'm not going to do that to you. So today we're just going to concentrate on the build, and then you look very soon, you know, keep an eye out, and I will give my one-year review with the performance and expectations and, and what I thought was good, what was bad, what I would do different if I were to redo this build today so you're not uh, left in the dark like I'm getting ready to be. So let's turn around and do this. Now I did not really choose this design over any other design. I really did not know what the best design was going to be and what was going to be working out for me. But the design basically kind of came about primarily because of my food cabinet. We'll see here that uh, I, I got basically two components here. I have my food cabinet and I have the solar collector down here. It is that food cabinet that was the primary influence as to why I went about things the way I did. So just keep that in mind and I'll talk more about that when we get to it. But I'm going to start down here on the <clears throat> food dehydrator or the uh, solar collector. This collector was influenced by the choice of cover that I made for the top here. That is probably going to be the uh, primary influence for the size and shape of your solar collector as well. So what I did, I chose to use one sheet of Tough Tex polycarbonate, crystal clear polycarbonate. And this is what dictated primarily the size of my collector, mainly the width. So that brought me to my box, which I use two by eight yellow pine untreated lumber. And I closed it in on the bottom for the floor of the uh, collector with a sheet of cut OSB, untreated. 
I got, uh, I think I got uh, two or three coats of black paint inside and out. That's what I got. On the inside here, I have one sheet of corrugated tin steel. And it is 30 inches wide. My box is 25 inches wide, my collector. So it is sitting in there in a convex shape. The edges of my corrugated metal in there is coming up on the inside wall of my wood uh, collector here. I did cut it off a little bit. It is seven and a half feet long. I got two small, just little uh, blocks of wood up here to keep it uh, from resting down here at the bottom and, 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 and sliding down. So I just got two little stoppers in there. It's not screwed in, glued in, or anything like that. It's just sitting in there in a convex shape inside. Just one sheet. I got the cover here, and I have what they call um, closure strips. When you get polycarbonate panels, you ha also have the option to buy uh, the cover or closure strips on the end. I chose white because typically when you use polycarbonate, uh, they'll recommend that you use a light or white color. And what that is supposed to do is reduce what they call the hot spot effect from the, from the sun beaming down and getting so hot on your fastening hardware and uh, the, the support of your polycarbonate panel from heating up too much. You get a little uh, radiation or light reflection off the light and white colored and that's supposed to make our polycarbonate last that much longer. I also did the same with two cross members I put in here just because of the length and uh, as this thing heats up because it kind of wants to bow out and, and flex in a little bit so I gave it a little extra support. In between the polycarbonate and the top of the solar collector I have a foam weather stripping. I think it's like a three quarter inch wide. It's only an eighth of an inch thick. You know what I'm talking about that you can use around doors and windows and it has the, the peelable back so it's sticky. That is in between the polycarbonate and, and, and the, uh, the wooden frame, you know, sandwiched in there. And then I took, and that's on both sides full length. So it's sealed up pretty good. And then what I did, because I got the seam of polycarbonate, the weather stripping and the box, I just decided to use what they call um, drip edge. It's roofing uh, drip edge. It's real light, flimsy, galvanized. And I decided to use that as some cornering, edging on, on, on the top here that I could uh, fasten through. That just kept you know, moisture and rain from you know, pounding in on that seam a little bit. Um, and it, it makes it look okay. I will say this, in all these pan head screws that I utilized, if you're gonna use a uh, cordless screw gun like I did, I would uh, set the torque setting down a little bit. This is just assuming that you're gonna do what I do. Um, set the torque setting on your screw gun down a little bit because you don't really wanna scrunch this down real tight. You just want it nice and snug so it doesn't deform this very thin drip edge or possibly crack your polycarbonate. And same thing with you on your uh, end closures. It's this way down at the bottom and top. I do have a piece of drip edge down here at the very bottom here. And that is just to keep you know, the, the, the water from going into my holes a little bit um, if it gives a hard rain. So down here at the bottom, I have my intake. My intake consists just of four two and a half inch diameter holes. I just did it that way because drilling holes with a hole saw is just fast, simple, and easy, and it was just nice and clean. And I kept these, uh, I kept the uh, the pucks that come out, you know, of the hole saw when you get done drilling, just in case, because I didn't know at the time if I'd need to but just in case I needed to uh, restrict a little intake air for some reason. Because you got to play around with them to, to learn how to, to work them a little bit. If they get too hot, how to cool them down, or how to increase the, the heat if you need to. So I have now then at the top, I chose to go with three four-inch holes, doing the same thing, using a hole saw. 
Um, I do have screen up top on the out, outgoing air and on the intake down at the bottom. I, I use screen. I went with the galvanized uh, to give me a little bit more assurance for some chewing bugs not to, to chew through it. And then I use that thin uh, furrow strip wood and uh, I supported that screen with staples and everything around each hole um, on, on the top here and the bottom. So now I got to get this heated air from the solar collector because of the way I went about this. Um, I got to get it transferred from here in the collector to the food cabinet. And what I chose to do is to use the dryer duct, just four inch size dryer ducting. I chose to go with the semi-rigid because I wanted a little bit of uh, durability, a little bit more strength than that, uh, if it was going to be out here in the weather and whatnot. So how I make that transfer is I had gotten, I'm sorry if you're hearing all that wind, but how I chose to do that is uh, to make them that connection is I went what they call, with what they call a uh, dryer duck dock, or some know it as a wall dock you know, for dryer vents or any other kind of, you know, four inch ventilation. And they come in, uh, uh, it's a two piece deal, but you kind of got a little quick disconnect. You know, they just come together, the two flanges, you give a slight twist and they just lock in and it completes a, a, a ventilation circuit for dryers and stuff. Worked out perfect. So all I had to do was take one side of that dryer dock, attach it to the um, upper portion of the solar collector. I pre-drilled the flanges of the dryer dock. I pre-drilled it so I didn't crack it. I just screwed it into the top of the the solar collector box and then I sealed it up with uh, silicone all, all around it and, and any little crevice that would uh, have the potential of letting any moisture or air in through there. That was simple. Then I just connected my semi-rigid dryer duct to the to the uh, to the flange coming out, and that was done. And then the transfer just takes place into my food cabinet with the other half of that dryer duct coming from the inside of the cabinet out. Again, I pre-drilled through the dryer duct, and in this case, I pre-drilled through the um, food cabinet, secured it and attach that four inch dryer duct hose to, to the end coming out here on the bottom and it works great. So that's how we get the heat transferred from the collector to the food cabinet. So let's move to the food cabinet. Right. What this is, is this is the old electrical control cabinet of something like a 30, 40, maybe 50K diesel or gas generator. That's what this is. So this thing was built to last to begin with. And it was built uh, with the uh, uh, mindset of keeping electrical components and instrumentation out of the weather. So it worked out perfect. <laughs> it really did. Because it is heavy duty. It has got good stiff hinge from top to bottom on the door. Everything about this thing is heavy duty. Uh, that is why I used 5x5, five five, dimensional 5x5 five five treated post to hang this thing because it's got some weight to it. I had to get a neighbor buddy of mine to come over to help me hang it, him and his son. Hung real easy. Two bolts on the bottom and two bolts on the top and it is solid and secure. Plus going a little beefy on the post, you know, if we get strong winds and everything with this weight here, I thought it just better to be safe than sorry. It is concrete. Both legs are concreted in the ground three feet deep. So it's, it's in here. It's in here to stay for a while. So here we see, I opened the cabinet up, all right? I got a nice sturdy door with extra supports. This door um, has a rope rubber seal all the way around it. So it seals up against this lip tightly and nice. So that was a big plus. So what you see in here is I got nine trays, all right, in here. On the inside here, you'll see um, the ducts, the uh, dryer dock, 
you know, going down through the bottom here. There's a few extra holes here that I got to get some uh, electrical knockout plugs that I'm going to uh, cover these other holes down at the bottom. I just have some uh, pieces of rubber that lay flat on them holes and, 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 and keeps bugs and stuff like that out for right now. So this is basically it. Um, I have uh, scrap two by four wood going uh, on up and down on both sides of the, the walls here. And uh, those are secured to the wall with all these screws that you see on the outside. I use what they call stitch screws all over this thing with the exception of those pan screws. Anywhere I wanted to seal off water and moisture and air, uh, uh, cold air coming in or uh, uh, hot air escaping, I use what they call stitch screws that they use on metal roofing, metal siding, stuff like that. They have the rubber washers on them. So that worked out real nice. So that's what's securing these uh, two by fours on each side. That allowed me to use some scrap, uh, fur, um, what do they call it? Uh, furrow wood or whatever, strip wood. That uh, it's not very good stuff, but I had a, a bundle of it here on hand and I wanted to try to keep my cost down until I was sure you know, that I was gonna be satisfied with this build at least. So I just secured it to the wood. It was real nice and easy. And I got nine trays in here. I can go 10 trays. I can have a 10th tray up here if I take out uh, those top three studs up there. But right now I think I'm okay and I'm gonna just go with what I got. As far as these, uh, these um, uh, trays that I built, same thing, that old cheap, wood that you can buy in bundles at Ferro Wood. I just uh, framed them in here. Uh, I got some metal corner frames to help to keep it a, a little more rigid because this type of wood here, it will warp and twist. I mean, it's warped and twist when you buy it from the doggone box store anymore. It's hard to get it straight and true. And uh, then I chose to go with stainless steel a 304 stainless steel, what they call um, wire uh, woven mesh. The size of my mesh, they call number four mesh. It's basically what that means is each hole in here is a quarter inch by a quarter inch. And that's what I chose to go with. This was the most costly part of the build, but I thought it was worthwhile based on it, what everybody was saying out there you know, in the debate whether you should use some kind of a galvanized screen or um, fiberglass type screen. Um, there was just too much debate and I thought, you know what, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it right and just take extra precaution and not worry about it. So I did choose to go with the stainless steel uh, mesh. Up top here, you'll see that it's kind of overkill on my screws but I didn't want to have to go buy extra screws for every little application on this build. So I used again, stitch screws uh, coming up <laughs> through here. You'll see I got screens, it's screened in, the cabinet is screened in for the exhaust air on top. So if we go on top here, how I chose to do my venting. I chose to use uh, what they call takeoff uh, duct. It's flange takeoff or takeout starter duct. It uh, has a flange, it comes, uh, I got them with a, a seal or a gasket. So that worked out perfect. I drilled two six inch holes in this cabinet and I got the six inch takeoff flange ducts. And then I just capped them off. Oh, I got dampeners. The dampeners are the key to my control of my uh, temperature and airflow. And then I just capped them off with some rain caps. I chose these particular rain caps, you know, because they kind of got a, a downward angle to them. And I thought that would help in the um, back draft, you know, possibly taking place when the wind blows. I was hoping to at least reduce it. And that's why I chose them. So some things just worked out pretty nice. But that is the build. And don't forget, I'm not going to leave you hanging. Look out for the next video. And I'm going to give a review of this thing. I'm going to let you know whether this thing is I consider a fail or excess. And I'm going to give you an honest review. So keep a lookout for that. 
Folks, in the meantime, I hope you have a nice day. May all your branches become full of fruit, and I will see you next time. Whoa.